I'm Melinda Elmer and I'm here with Century 21 Masters. Today I'm here to talk about the pitfalls or the pros and cons of Airbnb. Hi, I'm Melinda Elmer with Century 21 Masters and today I'm here with Bart DeLeo of Farmers Insurance. And today we're here to talk about some of the pros and cons of Airbnb and some things you probably didn't know. Um, you know, it's been, been a very popular thing these days for people renting out a room or uh, renting out a, um, an apartment or a whole house even on Airbnb. Um, and yet there's a few things that they want to be aware of. Now, I've even had people call me and ask if they could buy a rent of a uh, condo in particular and ask if they could do Airbnb in that condo. And most condo associations actually specifically prohibit properties to be rented out on a, a short-term basis. They want to have at least month-to-month -month or year leases on those rentals. So they specifically will prohibit that and, and if you get caught, they'll actually could fine you or um, force you to sell the property. Um, so, th so that's generally not a good idea, <laughs> obviously. Um, but there are a lot of people who are buying a duplex or renting out a room in their house or things like that, which can be a great way to bring in some extra money. However, I've learned recently, and this is why I brought Bart on, that there are some things that you want to watch out for. And I'm going to have Bart share some of the things insurance-wise that you want to watch out for. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me, Mel. I appreciate you uh, bringing me out to talk about this. Absolutely. This really is a big deal. Uh, I try to tell my clients, and probably you should tell your clients, that their home is the biggest thing that they own, and in many cases will be the biggest thing they ever own. Absolutely. And they should protect it, uh, just like they would anything else. Somebody buys a ring, I get a call in five minutes saying, oh, I need to cover this ring. Mm -hmm. Somebody does something in their house, I don't get a call for six months, and I say, well, you know, I put up a new wing. Should I tell you about that? Like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> right. So let's talk for a minute about the vacation rental business. I'm going to call it vacation rental because there are other companies besides Airbnb that do this. And there are companies, of individuals that have done it for many years. Airbnb just brought it all together and gave a venue for people to get to it, some uh, access. So uh, the first thing is, as soon as you uh, put your room up for rent or a house up for rent or a unit up for rent, you're turning your house into a business. So you need to consider it as a business and look at it like a business. And to do that, you need to take into account things like uh, taxes, you're getting income that you have to report, uh, and you need to modify your insurance or change your insurance that you're covered. Airbnb does have some of their own coverage, but let me talk about if you do it on your own first before we do that. Uh, your regular homeowner's policy doesn't cover business pursuits. So your homeless policy won't cover you for renting out your room. Uh, so that's something that you need to take into consideration. There are policies that do cover you. Uh, they have limitations, uh, just like the Airbnb insurance has limitations. We'll talk about both of those in a few seconds. So the biggest limitation is that it's difficult to get this kind of coverage for uh, a single unit, uh, in, in a room in your house, for example, for a condo unit or for an apartment unit. I've spoken to clients that have uh, rented out their uh, uh, rental property, not rental property, their rented room, for example, a rented house, uh, and there's some big loopholes for that. It's di very difficult to get insurance on your own if you do that by yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest loophole is, uh, so then uh, you can't do it with a condo, can't do it with an apartment, uh, you can't do it with a single family house if the person's renting the whole house. If they're just renting a room, then it's difficult to get coverage for that on your own. Good to know. <clears throat> um, so uh, keep in mind that the best way to cover yourself is if you have your st uh, freestanding home and you're going to cover that as a single unit and change the insurance for that. You're going to have to go for something called the DP3, and that's a kind of technical jargon, but the bottom line is that it's covering you, but at less coverage than what you'd have normally. So that's something you need to look into. Airbnb has something called the Host Protection Insurance, uh, and I like that program. I looked it up. Uh, it fills in some of the loopholes that you would be missing from a condo or a, a rented unit. Uh, and uh, assuming that it doesn't eliminate the issues with the condo association or with the landlord that may right. not know that you're renting it out. Mm -hmm. But it does uh, fill in some blanks for other coverage. So let's talk about some of the coverage that they cover. So they have, a, you can look up their host protection insurance summary on their Airbnb website. Uh, it gives you a breakdown of what's covered and what's not covered. Some of the things that are covered are bodily injury and property damage to a third party, not to you, to your uh, tenant, somebody that you're renting to. Another thing it covers is uh, property damage to your unit. And there's a separate coverage that takes care of minor things 
on Airbnb uh, if uh, something's missing, like a stature from the room or something might have been missing from the room. And I didn't read all the details on that, but if you're renting out a room, then you should read all the details on that. I'll tell you the biggest area that's not covered is something called loss of use. So if you have a fire in your house and you can't use the house for six months, your regular insurance policy is going to pay for you to stay somewhere else. Airbnb does not cover that. Mm -hmm. Also, if you get your own policy uh, that covers it, if you don't want to go through Airbnb, uh, there may be an exclusion for loss of use for that. So you, you've got a, a place for bodily injury. You've got a place for property damage. You don't have a place for loss of use. And that could be a big deal. Uh, I've had minor damage to my clients' homes from a small fire, and they were out of the house for nine months of the small fire. There was about this much fire, and the rest of the house was covered with smoke. So that's something to take into consideration. So what I want to bring to your clients and to my clients is that this is a business. There are risks involved, and you should consider carefully what those risks are before you go into uh, renting your home to somebody you don't know. Absolutely. And if you have any questions about this or anything insurance-wise or real estate-wise, we're happy to answer those questions. You can reach myself at 562-316-2915, or of course you can email me at melinda at theelmerteam.com. And Bart can be reached at? Thatinsuranceguy.com. Or you can look me up at thatinsuranceguy.com at yahoo.com. Perfect. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, please forward and share with all of your friends.